On my drive, on my road trip, I had a, the opportunity to have a long conversation about autism. <laughs> and what's interesting about that is what, one of the things that, that Ye is saying is um, that, you know, it, whatever it is, maybe he's autistic, right? And, and, and then I started thinking about, well, what, what would that look like and how would that help us understand sin? And I think I have a way in. I, ha I think I have some steps here. Um, and that he's actually showing us uh, what sin means and and how to think about what sin is. But I'm I'm also getting there to a place where I think we need we can understand Christ better. So we're going to go from yay to autism to Christ. How's that? Why are some people? I think I think maybe I need to settle down on this. It's like, why are why are some of us able to hear what Ye is saying and others simply aren't? Why are some of us saying this is great? He's showing us something that we really need to see, and others simply say no, he's crazy, right? And those are the two poles, right? It's like he's either I mean the the the, the strong one just like he's breaking the Overton window because he's getting everyone talking about things that we really haven't talked about ever. Um, you know, having having this conversation about can we can you love a mass murderer? Well, I mean, he has made the point I think many times that there's plenty of people out there who, um, some people seem to have no you know qualms whatsoever about saying they love. I mean, everybody like loves Mao, loves Lenin, loves Stalin, and and to say love loves Hitler, you're suddenly over the over the over the barrier and into a land where I, Dennis Prager did a, a piece that got shared around a lot. I think I saw it in my email feed like every day for two weeks. Um, those who deny the Holocaust, if they there's no there's no hell if those who deny the Holocaust don't go there or something like that, right? It's like it, the, the, there are oh, so, yeah, there, there yeah, are yeah, absolutely yeah. unforgivable sins, and apparently Ye has fallen into one of these, right? That the, the, this if you if it, he hasn't actually denied the Holocaust, which is interesting um, at all. I mean, no. he's, he has. No. I haven't ever heard him say that. Um, it, he's he's not denying that the event happened. He's he's denying the the significance of the history as opposed to the mythological character that Hitler has been given to play in our cultural uh, consciousness, which is apparently an unforgivable position to take. If you, if you don't absolutely share, oh, let's see, the myth that we're all supposed to believe in, you are to be cast into the outer darkness and damned. Well, he's, he's breaking mythological taboos. Yes, he's breaking the mythological taboos. This is okay. That is exactly. I knew. I knew I could count on you once I get you warmed up and woken up. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> that that we're dealing with taboo here, and therefore we're we're dealing with a particular feeling for what it means to be able to be part of the community. I mean, that's a sort of Evo psych version of things, right? Ye is being told he can no longer belong to not just polite society, but society at all. I mean, given with the, yeah. the, the cancellations and stuff like that, you are not allowed anywhere near anybody else. It's very interesting that this all started. The White Lives Matter shirts were in Paris Fashion Week. And guess guess how Ye had shown up at Paris Fashion Week, which is apparently fine at the time, because this, this image now that I'm showing ran everywhere, which is Ye up to his you know hips in, in mud basically, <laughs> which I, I, you know, mythologically interesting. Here's the Balenciaga opening a Paris Fashion Week, and there he is in those boots that he keeps wearing, walking oh, yeah, through a catwalk covered in sludge, as, as far as I can tell, in some kind of, like, military outfit and a, a hat, and there he is in Fashion Week in mud, I wonder if he knew what was going to happen in the next month or so. Because this is this is of course an image before any of the mud started getting flung about the white lies t-shirt matters t-shirts because those I think Candace and he were showing off later in the show. So here we are, prophetically, yay, covered in slime. And yet that one was actually okay, right? It was okay for him to be covered in slime. Well, he said he's autistic. What do we mean by that? Do we have any knowledge of what? autistic is so do we do we have a definition of autism is is it even a meaningful thing for him to say that he is well, i mean sure but like this is kind of an argument about neurodiversity in the first place mm -hmm. this is a buzzword now um and you know they've expanded all of these categories of um, 
neurological styles and uh, you know made a definition. I mean, I don't know if they're like, pathologized, but uh, people are encouraged now to define themselves as neurodiverse, neurodiverse, and be on various spectrums of neurodiversity. That culture's kind of emerged, where uh, they're encouraged to be accepting of neurodiverse people, and yet won't allow them the uh, free range room space that they need in order to function neurologically, however they need to. Which is kind of interesting of saying it. So I have, I mean, I I think I'm neurologically diverse for sure. I'm kind yeah. of smarter than most people in my life. <laughs> I mean, and and yeah. and in in the in the sense of, I'd say it's interesting to me that neurologically diverse. It's like we're all neurologically diverse. If you really want to get into it, it's like if you're on the high IQ end of the spectrum, you're neurologically diverse because we do kind yeah. of sort of believe that intelligence is kind of sort of. A something that you have or don't like athletic ability or musical ability or yes there's different you know there's there's other kinds of you know intelligences or something like that but we still seem to claim that they're um neurologically based oh yes you think with your brain okay fine okay but so but this yes. you know the neurologically diverse in this context seems to be can you see something that other people see? Can you understand something? It, it's never neurologically diverse in a, this positive direction of either maybe I'm just smarter than you are. I mean, Ye has been saying he's a genius, which Tucker Carlson said of him when he was interviewing him, which I think is an interesting claim. There is There he is showing Hitler and, and the genius uh, Albert Einstein. Do we think Albert Einstein was neurologically divergent? <laughs> No, I so to me it's like it's 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 a sort of you know semantic grabbling constantly over indeed how tolerant or intolerant are we of variations in people's perception. Well, it is. It's like it goes back to the whole tolerance and the diversity obsession in the first place. Mm. Like as you're saying this, I'm just thinking of like okay, you've got uh, you've got this idea that. Everybody wants to have ethnic diversity, but nobody wants to have actual ethnic manifestation. Like it seems like you know, in a multicultural environment, which uh, you know we have in Australia now, and I mean multicultural, I mean multiracial. But there's this obsession over keeping everything multicultural because it's supposed to be um, better, I guess. Yet in that environment. People don't actually handle cultural differences whatsoever. So what ends up happening is you enter into this like gray zone where it's an agreed exchange. It's sort of like a, a non culture that's used for the exchange between all of the, the cultures that are existing together. It's very bland. There's no color in it. There's no um, um there's no life. And like the moment that you get too ethnic in that gray zone, people start getting nervous. So you have to stay in the gray zone. I don't know, there's probably like an anthropologist that has done some work on this, but this is just how it looks in my head. Same with the like neurodiversity argument. Everybody talking about, oh, okay, we've got different neurologies, we've got all these different kinds of brains that are wandering around, and yet all of these people that are supposedly diverse compared to the majority of the normies don't have it anywhere to go. They're expected to fall in that gray zone. But they're still conforming to the way that other people are thinking. You know, like hyper intelligent people like yourself, you have the academies. That's supposed to be the area where you guys can really go for it, like Formula One drivers that are at a racetrack. You know, there, there are particular um, spaces in the world that are created by people who want to demonstrate excellence in their particular talent or their particular gift. Um, yeah, you said this before. It was like you know me and Obama, like well, Formula One race drivers. Right. But everybody has everybody has their thing. They find their little niche. They find their environment, and they can go for it. The academies. You posted this article ages ago. If it's a, 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 the internet freedom, a case, a case, neurodiversity was a case for internet freedom or something. Mm. So ages ago, and it was talking about how the academies were supposed to be the places where the hyper intelligent freaks could let it rip and just do what they do best and you know like yeah and you know happens. what my experience in the academy has been yeah, I, yeah. I i say i say these things like milo is a holy fool and now you know we're we've moved on we've leveled up right we've got to the rap of the holy fool and 
most people can't hear what we're talking about, right? It's either he's crazy, you're crazy, you're evil. Stop changing our, you know, stop challenging our perception. You must be silenced and shamed. And I can get a little excited about this, obviously. Yeah, so the, the, I mean, the double speak on the diversity is is obviously very frustrating. Um, and so, well, it's a form of gaslighting. yes, it's a form of gaslighting yes, because for people like us who are not neurologically normal, we don't, we're not falling into the middle of a bell curve, right? So to tell us that we're accepted and we're you know uh, tolerate, tolerated, I mean. What even is that? Why would you tolerate someone? It's so horrible. Like, I don't want to be tolerated. <laughs> I want to be enjoyed. Or hated, you know? Hate me or enjoy me. Don't be tolerated me, but anyway. Okay, but fair, like, fair. I mean, I, you know, it you know would be I mean? nice to be enjoyed, but the, the, the feeling of, you know, barely suppressed rage at yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, what it is. Yep, yep. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, oh, good for you. You're not, you're not the standard uh, Whatever bell curve we're measuring right now, you don't choose the metric. You're on the outside. You're on the fringes. Right. Oh, how amazing and brave you are! Make sure you don't leave that gray zone. Well, I mean, it is so. It 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 it's fascinating to me because I I don't I don't mean to diss Tucker because I don't know what he knows, but it was interesting to me when he was interviewing Ye and talking about him being a genius, but without any specificity. And I I've said before that I didn't listen to Ye's music. I have more of it now, right? And. I love it, and I and and I'm I'm starting to realize indeed what the genius level may be in terms of the textures of the sounds that he's working with. The the I mean, we I was able to pick up on the playfulness of the the the, the language previously, but his music takes a lot of re-listening to. I mean, it's sort of it's a yeah. I think it's better than just it's not just hypnotic, right? The rap of the rap, which we let we left ourselves with last time, was is starting to to feed into me and. To say that, I mean, he's dangerous, clearly, because he is going to get people saying, God is, God is, God is. I mean, he's, he's, he's working at that level of, quote, programming that, of course, uh, I, I was reading an article today that's shared on my Telegram about the Fabians. And I get it now, right? Oh, they, they, yeah. They've been like H.G. Wells and the Fabians. They've been wanting to program us all for years, for a century, with their... Yeah. Um, particular hypnotic suggestions and Ye is of course deliciously dangerous to those claims just saying god is god yep. is god is in that that beautiful song is incredibly powerful mm. so i do say i mean i have substance to uh, appreciation of what you know sort of level of genius he might be but the I mean, what i what i realized in the the autism discussion that I was having is to a certain extent how this kind of ability to see difference is hated as as well. Apparent, apparently, the regular people like kicking each other, kicking other people out for not conforming. I guess we knew that. <laughs> Yeah, so I was having this conversation. Uh, this is quite a few years ago, and then I got called a Nazi and a pseudo intellectual moron, <laughs> <laughs> which, which is kind of a, it's, it's an interesting label to give someone who even cares about that kind of thing. But this is not a normal foot train to be so fixated on this kind of like, you know, to be fixated on an eighty-year-old issue. Like a military history, it's just it's, a, it's not a normal pastime to be thinking of that. And that was my hyper focus, and because of that, I was called to do intellectual moron. And then, I, you know, it took me a long time to realize. I thought, oh no, this is this is because I'm making you feel uncomfortable because what I'm interested in breaks the boundaries of your particular mythological taboo. I'm ruining, I'm ruining the myth, I'm ruining the fairy tale, I'm ruining the fantasy. So then. Yeah, you don't get to become part of the in group if you're the kind of person who has this sense of uh, needing to understand the patterns because you're going to correct unjust 